On the breakfast, ahead of the February 26th National Convention of the Ruling or Progressives Congress, stakeholders, members and loyalists of the party have thrown their weight behind the chairman. The Senate Services Committee is Senator Sani Musa of APC Niger is for the position of national chairman. We'll take a look at the APC convention amongst others. We'll also take a look at the call by the House of Representatives for ritual killings to be declared an emergency in Nigeria. And don't forget, we also will go through the day's headlines from the national dailies, analyzing the biggest stories. Welcome to the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's a very beautiful Thursday morning right here. And it feels really great to be back on your screen. Two hours of great, fantastic conversation right here. And uh, I know it's going to be great. Definitely. I am Messi Bofo. And I'm Kofi Bertels. It's great to have you. Mercy, fantastic to be here with you uh, this morning. Looking fabulous as always. Well, you too. You, you're not carrying me along. I think that should be a trending topic <laughs> one of these days. That You know, I met you here, but you've not, I don't know, taken me out to anything. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's you, know, you know the so hustle and bustle. Because, so. But it's go. okay. It's all right. Um, so, I mean, yesterday was quite interesting. We had a lot to talk about yesterday. It was about a few cues, you know. <laughs> they, they haven't ceased, you know. Oh, you saw, you saw them on your way to work this morning. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, the latest is that President Buhari is, uh, is angry, you know, and he, he called for sort of a query for the head of the um, National uh, Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, which re replaced the DPR, you know. Um, so let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. No, we, we, we hear it's no longer 100 million liters or 80. It's actually 371 million liters that were affected. But we'll look at that as we go on. You know. Why not? So, yeah. and, and it's okay if the president actually calls. Of course, so let's not forget that the president is the minister of petroleum. And there's been a lot of calls. So, so, some would argue that uh, a certain high court ruled that uh, he's not the minister of petroleum resources. He's still the <laughs> minister of petroleum resources. Yeah. And uh, yeah. too many questions. A lot of people and Nigerians are also thinking that the president should be answering some questions. Looking at the fact that he's acting in you know, double capacity. Anyway, um, uh, some tra trending stories. Let's get to that. Um, very, very bizarre one. <laughs> um, a child spotted drinking beer. I don't know whether we should call this beer because it's not technically beer beer. Oh, are you trying to make an excuse already? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm saying that the calling it beer may not be over, may exaggerate it because, you know, this is not beer beer. Um, from what I can see, it's a brand of beer that is mixed with um, citrus. How do you call it? Citrus. Oh, oh citrus. Okay, I, I don't. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. As as a good Christian that I am, there's nothing like good Christianism. But as a good Christian, it's because I, I you're would not know. being a Christian, and that's why you have to say good Christian. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to be. A bit. So, oh, okay. So it's it's beer mixed with citrus. Well, that's that's the description that has been put out. <laughs> uh, you, you just said it yourself. Now you're trying to. Is the pastor watching or what? <laughs> uh, you know. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a uh, Catholic priest friend has told us, you know, the, the popular one who is always on social media, that um, there's nothing wrong with Christians drinking beer, you know. So or alcohol. I don't so know. usually, I don't like to double into those kind of conversations Ooh, but because they're very. Strong. Anyway, tell us about the the the, the citrus and. Uh, so first of all, when I saw that video, so there's a video that's made the rounds and I probably would think if I'm not mistaken that this is not, even though it has actually resurfaced again, I would say resurfacing because um, at some point I can't really say if it's the same child we seen that video. There was a time also where there was a video of a child okay. who was having beer okay. and so, the, mm. the, but, but you know, no matter how how many times it has resurfaced, mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. even change, you know, the conversation yeah. surrounding it. Yeah. And one of the conversations surrounding is the fact that a lot of people have blamed that on poor parenting. Okay. And some people the, think the, that the, that's the, not the a good Blaming thing. the fact that this child was seen on social media holding a bottle of, of beer. And having a great time. So, so I started reading the comments uh, following that particular post. And some persons were saying, oh no, 
uh, you, maybe it's possible that he was drinking water from that bottle and what have you. And then there was a lady close by, but okay. you can't really tell if the lady was um, a caregiver or was the mother or was a guardian. You can't really say what exactly that was. But it still brings us to the fact, the issue of negligence. So when we talk about child abuse, we're usually very um, fast to look at the issue of oh, um, being very violent with the child. But issue of neglect has also not been considered as child abuse. Child abuse. Wow. Because wow. when you, yes, negligence is also another form of child abuse. Because every child, even though we still have uh, out of the 36 states across the federation, including the FCT, a lot of states have not been able to adopt that, domesticate that particular law to say, okay, okay here, child, this child is Child Right Act. Act. Yes. Oh. So not every, I mean, the entire state, if you look at Nigeria, not every state have been able to adopt that and the issue of negligence is top on the list but you know usually when we talk about child abuse we're very quick to look at you know the physical harm that's been caused to the child sexual harassment and what have you but negligence is also another form of child abuse because according to the constitution of every republic of nigeria your child, I mean, looking at who a child is uh, from zero, you want to say to like 18 years. And at this point in time, it's expected that you make decisions and protect this child. I mean, let's look at the content of that. However, I want to make it look like see truths and a little bit of you know <laughs> is, is it really beer is it really beer i wish i wish you could put the, 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 no, the, the, the picture on, on on screen but is it really beer you know but the funny thing about well, this are we going to argue if it's really beer or coffee I, I, are we asking, really going no, to no, argue no, it's a question i want to know i don't i'm, I'm asking no, you, to know you, but but the funny thing about it is that the the um the body it's a it's a, a popular um, um, brand. Uh, brand that has to go one of the things in the sky, you know, that we <laughs> see, you, you know, that shine bright, <laughs> you know, the ones that shine. Okay. But anyway, um, the, 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 the Twitter handle for, for this brand that you said is mixed with what? Beer and what? No, you talked about it. I you know, mean, alcohol. Beer what? Beer and what? Citrus. Okay, a combination yeah. of citrus yeah, and alcohol. Yeah, I consultant some beer matters for today. <laughs> <laughs> they said this, they had to put out a tweet. You know, our attention has, and you know, in this this time, everybody is just trying to be politically correct. I'm tired of it, this political correctness and uh, and you know, wokeness, and you know, you just you can just they put out a tweet. Our attention has been drawn, but in, in terms of you know public relations, it's it's okay to do that, you know. But the pressure on on corporates, you know, on people is a bit too much because you get, get called out and cancelled, you know. But anyway, they said our attention has been drawn to a video of a, and, and they they do their job, which is they say it's not for persons below eighteen, you know. And but because of fear of backlash, they have to do this. That's the world we live in today. But anyway. They said attention has been drawn to a video of a child drinking this brand. Uh, we are disturbed by this video as it promotes the wrong values. Say no to underage drinking. You understand? So they put that, that out, which is okay. Which is okay. But the pressure, you know, uh, would have been No, you, you necessarily not said the pressure. And that's why I came. Okay, so if you say the pressure, then it's okay to set the pressure. But like I have mentioned, the issue of negligence, because your child up until you turn a particular age, according mm. to the Constitution, mm. and at, within this ambience, you're expected that you should have people who should protect you. Because I, I, you can't, you're not expected it's not to make decisions. It's not the fault of the beer company. They, they no, should, no, it they can't should. be the fault of the beer yeah, company. So they, but but the, it's necessary that they put that out again as a it's, reminder it is, but I'm saying the, of the, what the, they stand the for. The world we live in today, there's so much pressure, you know, on, on brands, on people, on individuals that you, you know, you don't know what people are going to throw your way and start cancelling you and boycotting you. And then it, it's it's now become so too much, really, so, you know, for me. You know, look at what's happening to Spotify. I mean, I, I'm black, you know, but, but you look at what's happening to Spotify and uh, Joe Rogan. And then a lot of other things, you know, um, people are under pressure to just be politically correct these days. You know, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. So it still brings us one and uh, the same thing that we have been saying that it's an issue of having negligence. A uh, child has been neglected because if you look at child by, negligence. By the parents. By the parents or the guardian okay, or whoever okay. is involved. Okay. And that's also a case of child abuse because within this particular age you know period of time what it, or however you want to put it it's expected that the guardian parents mm -hmm. should be responsible for them look out for them and understand what you know is right and what is not wrong because uh it's also been looked at at that particular age you're not even to make some decision and judgment for themselves so it's it's just a case of 
another child abused because someone has refused mm. to pay attention. But hopefully, uh, let's just look out for kids and our children. Yes, very important, very important. But, um, you know, some things happen and then people will be asking, I mean, are you surprised? Like, it, we've seen it several times. What, what people are doing, what we see on social media is we see worse than that, you know. Um, thankfully, you said this one is, is fruit juice and beer, right? <laughs> why do you, why, you, sound, you sound like you know, I'm the one that produces. There are parents who actually give their children <laughs> real full beer. I've, we've seen videos of parents giving their children beer. You know, when we're kids, you know, we have parents who, in parties, they'll call the, the, the kid, come and sit on my lap, take. And they have a reason why they, why they do that, you know. But, but um, at least the message must be passed. Um, and, and I think the, the company did well to also lend a voice to say, you know, underage drinking is wrong. All right. I know I'm a bit emotional about the whole pressure on, you know, but that's the right thing they should have done. Uh, Mercy, let's talk football. Um, uh, people were wondering why the Nigerian Football Federation uh, went back on its uh, uh, touted appointment of uh, Jose Mourinho's former assistant at Real Madrid, um, Jose uh, Pesero, as the coach of the Super Eagles after the Nations Cup. You know, um, in, in fact, during before the Nations Cup, when Austin Aguavo was appointed as interim, you know, uh, 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 manager or coach, or like we say in this country, technical advisor. Um, of the Super Eagles for the tournament. People were like, uh, if you, you have a new coach who is going to come in and, and, and coach the Super Eagles team, why don't you appoint him and let him lead the team? But, you know, they said they wanted him to study the, the, the Super Eagles and all that before he comes on. Now, after that Egypt game, of course, we all remember that Nigerians were saying, well, look, at they played well, they beat Egypt. So, Egwavon should be the coach, you know. Now, following the Nations Cup, Egwavon stepped aside and then... A couple of days later, we heard that um, Iguavon uh, had been reappointed as interim coach um, to be assisted by Amunike, uh, former Nigerian national, both team, teammates at the uh, USA 1994 World Cup. And people are wondering what's going on. So this man, Jose Pesero, put up a statement on his Twitter, um, on his Instagram you know, uh, account to say, I never had any agreement with the Nigerian Football Federation, that we were still talking. Only for these guys to come tell Nigerians and to tell the world that Pesero is going to be their next coach. Had they signed any agreement? Was there any signing ceremony? You know, there was nothing like that. And the man said they were still talking. They, were still, they had not agreed. You know, so he said at the end of the day, they could not come you know, to a con an agreement as to the financials and then some details in the contract. So... There was no agreement at the end of the day, you know, and, and, and this meant that probably the Nigerian Football Federation should have maybe waited till the man had signed the dotted lines or what Don what you call agreed in, agree in principle before coming out to tell Nigerians that this former Real Madrid assistant coach has agreed in principle to be the coach of the super eagles so 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 it's just um you know a thing of how we can be very very zealous and sometimes forget all of that so usually you probably are in talks with someone and then there's a body language even though that has not been but uh it would possibly just be because i'm not holding brief from them but i'm just imagining the scenario would have, would have played out the nff would probably have thought that maybe there's some green light, there's some hope that everything has been dotted. And then, of course, Did we out of the zealous, out of the zealousness. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's not a matter of agreement, but it just shows. I mean, it's okay for him it, to put that out. It's a matter of agreement. He says he had not agreed with the NFL. So, so I'm saying that these are the possibilities that could surround it. I am not making, I'm not holding brief for the NFF. I'm just saying that we live in times, especially in this climate, where we could be very overzealous, and then one or two signals could definitely mean a yes to us. And so out of all of that, then we just go ahead and put out that statement. Right. So, but it's okay for him because at some point this response is coming uh, where you have the NFF also coming out to tell us that Austin Aguavon will be the interim, uh, you know, technical coach and what have you. And amongst others, I mean, uh, the list has been put out. And so it's very necessary for him to say, well, it doesn't also take out the fact that they were also in talks and they were also having conversation with, uh, you see, uh, Pusero. Right? So it is what it is. An agreement was not reached. It's very obvious. 
This is uh, this is what he said in the statement. Quote: mm. After several weeks of negotiations, uh, during which there uh, were several news from the he put it in Spanish, by the way, so the papers he had to do a, tr a, a transliteration. Um, after several weeks of negotiations, during which there were several news from the Nigerian Football Federation that I would be the coach of their team from the end of the Afcon 2021. Um, he said on his Instagram, a fact I never confirmed. This is what he wrote. A fact I never confirmed. And these did not materialize due to a disagreement regarding contractual clauses and financial matters. You know, so um, um, uh, th th that's what he said. You know, we were negotiating, we discussed, but had never uh, agreed, you know. Um, and then um, it, it also gives people uh, something to talk about as regards um, maybe the financial dealings of the Nigerian Football Association. We're well aware that uh, Gerhard Raw, the former coach of the team, was owed several months' salary. And anyone who's coming in will want some guarantees as regards that. Maybe he wanted to have a higher salary uh, than the NFF could afford. Who knows? But these are dynamics that... Um, uh, come to play, but at some point in, in, in African football, in Nigerian football. But but some are saying, you know what, um, Senegal has won the African Nations Cup with an African coach. The last Nations Cup in 2019, they were in the final with this same coach, and he's been able to build a team. The last country to win the Nations Cup before Senegal was Algeria. They also won the Nations Cup with an Algerian coach, an African coach. You know, some have said this would be a nice opportunity to see if we can just use our homegrown, you know, coaches to. To do some good. Well, the arguments for having a homegrown coach has never ceased and the conversation still continues right here. But, I mean, it's okay to have this uh, feedback from Jose Pacero at this point in time as regards the conversation and negotiation that's been ongoing that was never, um, of course, has come out to say. And that's because you have the NFF also coming out to make some statement that has warranted that is what I would think. So, but... As much as that's a very valid point, I mean, I'm just saying that in terms of negotiation, business and talks and what have you, there's a tendency that you get to that point where you feel like there's a green, I mean, we have, it's a done deal already. Because we would have expected him to speak earlier than before this time. So he felt like the NFF needed to make a statement before he comes out with that statement. Well, maybe maybe well, he wasn't well, even in, consulted. In, in, we in, really do not know what in, it in, is. In football, in football, mm. you can never make... A statement until you're sure. For instance, that a team wants to buy a player. You can be negotiating with that player for, for weeks and months, but you won't tell people we have him. You know, it, it, until until you you he has signed dotted lines, or maybe he has agreed in principle. That that's 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 point. And and um, you know, to have made all these announcements only for the thing not to go through, um, it maybe shows a bit of um, lack of um, management acumen. You know, to manage information well. You know, no, but, information so for me, I'm also thinking that, yes, it, it, it's also a problem. But mm -hmm. as of the time that that statement was put out by the NFF, he didn't come out to, you know, make uh, any other claims or refute that. So there's also possible because whether or not you act, I mean, it's something called in business law that whether or not you have agreed to it, the fact that he didn't say anything within that period could have also meant that he had accepted it is what it is, and Nigerians are looking forward to having him. Mm -hmm. So it's just a two-way thing. But however, whatever it is, uh, it feels like you have actually gotten to that point where um, not, you know, the NFF have actually decided to settle down with having locals running the affairs of you know, the football and uh, all of the things that has to do with sports mm -hmm. and football. Let, let's see how it goes. Though they're using the word interim for uh, a Govon, which may indicate that it's not permanent, yeah. You, you, have, have you forgotten what we've had, like acting uh, the Inspector General, please? Yeah, well, <laughs> acted I, I, up I, 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 would, I would love to see Amunike given a chance to, to mm. run, the, run the show. I'm sure we'll talk about yeah, this tomorrow. Yeah, yeah like, like he should be given a chance to run. He's, he's not done badly, you know. All right, um, we, we have some an, a last one, Mercy. Um, this happens to be a, a, a sort of alleged refusal by um, telecommunications. Um, uh, uh, the telecommunications officials or workers, uh, uh, union rather, um, giving a particular network an ultimatum. You know, giving a particular network an ultimatum. Um, so we hear that uh, the telecommunications union under the ages of the private telecoms uh, and communications senior staff association of Nigeria issued a 14 day ultimatum um, to. A telecoms company to address certain 
issues bordering on workers' welfare or face industrial action. Um, I mean, we've not had telecom strikes, you know, in the past. I don't remember the last time I heard anyone like that. Um, but the association, you know, said that its workers would down tools and subsequently disrupt communication services nationwide if the telco, this particular telco, one of the big ones, uh, fails to accept its demands for the expiration of the two-week ultimatum. And I don't know how we're going to cope because this network is everywhere you go, you know. So um, I don't know how people are going to cope if we have this telecommunication strike uh, affecting the network coverage around Nigeria. So o over time, uh, the conversation of having uh, laws protecting the workers in Nigeria has been in question. And so you constantly ask yourself, the issue of welfareism, I mean, how are these workers faring? Uh, we want to begin to look at the current realities. It, it's really, really sad. So you ask yourself, someone who's been earning a particular amount for a very long time, let's say 50,000 naira, and that's like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, still ends, you know, 50,000 naira in 2022. It doesn't really add up. It doesn't make sense because time's evolving. We're moving with the trend. I mean, you want to even to begin to look at our climb, the issue of inflation, the value of the Naira and what have you. It doesn't really add up. So, yes. Um, but as always, it, it feels like, you know, because capitalism is a system of government that usually the, the priority is usually about, I mean, interest. Interest would always be it, profit. And so it feels like, you know, the, that system doesn't really necessarily care about the people. Uh, it's quite unfortunate. Th this is a time where you begin to ask the association, the laws, uh, what are the laws protecting the rights of workers, especially for the private sector and what have you. It's, it's really sad. But let's see how things pan out. All right, let's see how things pan out. Time to take a break. And uh, of course, when we come back, we'll dive into the details and analysis of the headlines from today's National Dailies with Ezekiel Inya Etok, a public affairs analyst. Stay with us.